Okay, on today's episode, things to think about. So I have some things to just kind of give them to you to kind of ponder. And this is one thing too. I mean, people are constantly saying, um, I see it to other people. I haven't I haven't ever had anybody say it to me, like I'm trying to create fear or something, but I see it said to a lot of other people. So if I'm seeing anything <clears throat> that creates fear, to me, that is your trigger. That's what you need to look at because that is where you have to get it into your head. You're an eternal being. You're in an episode of uh, Adventures in Hell. So you aren't really here. You are really eternal. And you are, you know, a hologram, an avatar. You are an expression of self to understand self. So you come in for the experience. <clears throat> so you have to, you know, for one thing, if if you're being triggered all the time, like, oh, I'm so scared and this is going to happen. And that's going to happen. That's what you need to go in and look at is that aspect of, you know, why do I feel disconnected? Why do I not? Why do I fear death? That's the main thing. Why do you fear death? Because death is a creation. It's not even real. So there's a lot to absorb about that and to, you know, look at. So it's a good trigger to have, you know, to have things come up that give you fear so that you can be like, it's a really easy one to recognize. Like, oh, I know what this feeling is. I'm scared of this. Why am I scared of this? So you have an opportunity to go in and look at like, why am I being fearful of this? And so, because there, there was some stuff I wanted to talk about, about the, you know, it could be scary to people because just like what I was saying, you know, where I've been saying this this whole time, like how all these events are going to occur and the timelines and how that all works, I don't know. And to me, there still definitely seems to be in the realm of possibilities that they are <laughs> like every week, they're going back and doing something to our timeline, to the time. They're doing something so that they can create more time for themselves. Because, I mean, come on. I mean, how long could you keep your bank account going with no money in it? Like, I know they live by different rules. But still, um, you know, I mean, they're able to write hot checks all day long. <laughs> we go to jail for it. They uh, just, you know, it's their daily routine. But, you know, how they keep this dragging out, it, it makes so much sense that they are doing that. But, you know, you're not allowed to talk about it because I was already taken down before talking about it. And um, so you have to just think about things, you know, like, because this is like a movie. It's like they keep re-editing it. You know, they keep taking us back, taking us back. And I've seen so many people talking about these jumps in their timelines and reality shifting. And like, I had noticed that one about the Marianne Williamson book. I was like, no, I know who wrote this book. Don't be telling me somebody else wrote it. And I know that in the reality that I wrote, read that book, that it had such a significant impact on my life and my spiritual, my spiritual attitude that it was, you know, it was impactful. I remember who fucking wrote it. And I don't even know who the hell this guy is that they're saying wrote it now. It's like, it's weird. Um, and it's weird that she is here, but she writes different books. Books that I haven't even read. So it's like weird. This is so weird. But um, anyways, they're, I think that they are doing something. Because of how they're able to keep this continuing and continuing and continuing. It's like, but they're going to run out of time. I mean, there's only so much because they are not going to, as the planet shifts, you know, our planet, um, as this reality shifts into a higher vibration, which we are the creators of this. So as we awaken, we shift in the, the whole planet as its own consciousness and it is shifting. So we're all shifting together. Like we work in sit in sanctum is that the word we work all together with nature and this other state of consciousness like the universal consciousness is all working together with us that's why you know um you have them trying to communicate with you all the time it just depends on where you focus your attention if you're focused on this three-dimensional world then it takes your focus out from everything that's around you when you release 
this illusion of this world and you focus on self and connection and your spirituality, you start to realize that there is a whole consciousness around you that is, um, you know, it is, um, what is the word? <laughs> communicating. It's communicating with you. And so, you know, that is just part of um, an awakening, part of a realization that there are beings out there talking. Um, oh, and this is another thing too. And I had said this before, but I heard another girl say it yesterday. Uh, when I started smoking weed, because I didn't smoke it before, especially if it was a drug, it was a crime, you know, so uh, I didn't smoke it. I, and, um, you know, I, I don't know, I was an upper upstanding citizen with snotty ass friends. So um, anyways, I, um, when I did start smoking, when I tried to get off all the pharmaceuticals, and I was withdrawing from all of those chemicals, and that's when I started using I started with like the little weed candies and stuff. There was a part where I was in such pain that I did the RSO. And that's where I said like, that was like an acid trip. That was, and I keep giving it to Stella and I'm always like, man, what if she thinks something else? But I don't think that they have the same effects like how we do. Because to me, it was like I was trans. I mean, I went into a, a completely different reality. Like I was being shown things. It was totally trippy. And, um, it's when they showed me, like, it, it was like, I was, for one thing, when they pulled me, it was like a record was spinning and I was pulled in and all of those different lines on the record are all different realities. Like, that's how close we are to them. Like we could just shift into different ones. And I think that's going to be a part in our awakening of how we're able to move through space and time and stuff is, you know, is us kind of releasing this three-dimensional um the restraints that we place in ourselves to be in this reality and because everything is just right there and so when they had taken me that day it, it felt like I just was in and I, I I felt like I was spinning in a tornado or something it felt really weird but I wasn't moving but everything was going and I felt a strong message that I could get off wherever I wanted. And I think it's kind of like a portal or kind of like where you think about time travel or something like it's, it's all happening and you can go in and you can go out wherever you want. And where I went out to, it wasn't like I was making the choice. I didn't even know what was happening. I was just tripping out. I just remember when I went into that, it felt so real. Like I thought this was really happening. I didn't think I'm sitting on the couch thinking about this no I was there I was in it and I like kept, was like oh I gotta take Stella can I bring Stella that's what I asked can I bring Stella and they said yes but um they took me to out in space where it was just like I was out in space and I was looking down on something that looked like a roller coaster but as the roller coaster was going I was realizing this is this is the cycle of life this is like the ages move in movement and it was going through all of these cycles of happiness sadness um screaming like all the different emotions and it was going really fast around all these different experiences and i could feel them as if i was god as if i was this was me like that's how we, we are so connected to this stuff it is a part of us we just don't think of it because we are focused on this avatars experience but really it is um you can feel the the energy in the universe i i believe that's why they spend time communicating with us they're trying to help us because there is so much pain and suffering and when you're a part of that system that solar system you know are all part of the same being we're all part of the same system we're like we're like the nerves in the system and each of us as a nerve has an independent thought of self. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy when you think about it on these levels that I'm talking about, but, um, especially as compared to how they tell you to think, <laughs> it's very different. You know, oh, yesterday, even when I was saying about, 
the, you know, the neighbors and the pressures of keeping your dandelions contained. And, and I said about Roundup and I had this vision of myself going out and spraying. And then I think it was in the next year, it was like, oh, you can't use that. That's been pulled off the market. That's been, uh, now it's a poison, it's carcinogen and all this stuff. And um, that's what made me think of it. I hadn't even seen those TikToks where they're saying like, the people who are, who developed Roundup are the same people who um, developed a uh, heart medication. So there's a reason buy and kill the dandelions. So, um, and then on top of that with the Roundup, when I started hearing that they use it on other things, like they, in the process of their creation of our food, there's different processes and there is a certain time, like they can spray it on the seeds or the soil. There's something they can do, but they make sure they get these carcinogens in our system all the time. Like that is their priority because in this reality, they, they, um, you know, they thrive financially off of us being dependent on these, these cures <laughs> that they provide for us that don't cure shit that just make you sicker and sicker and sicker. And, um, but anyways, if um, these, you know, if you don't focus so much on this reality, you do get a more of a focus there. But I had heard this girl talking about when she started smoking weed, which she just started like a year or two ago too. It was only in the past few years. And she said the same thing as me because I would say it to people. Like I would be sitting around and I love that thing where a group of smokers get together. It's like a powwow. And you sit there and you have all these deep conversations and you pass around whatever it is you're smoking at the time. Uh, you know, it could be a pipe or whatever. But everybody sits there having these deep conversations. It's a very social time. Like, you don't, you don't really go into that group and everybody's got their phone out and is just waiting. No, they're very tuned in. So there's a there's a social purpose to it kind of. And, um, but I started saying, are, do you have a spiritual thing that starts happening? Like, do you start hearing people talking to you? Like, does it connect you more? And everybody would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. No. I'd be like, well, what do you think about? Like, what is it? Where does your mind go when you smoke? And a lot of people were just like, you know, I don't know. But to me, it was like all of a sudden you start hearing these people talking and they're giving you visions and stuff. And that's what this girl said happened to her. So maybe you have to just be more open to it. I'm not really sure. But, and if you do try, you know, like, oh, I want to try and connect like that. Um, you know, don't go in and think, oh, I got to smoke a whole joint. No, you probably one or two hits are going to like that would be it. You know, um, you don't have to smoke very much. A, you know, a whole joint that is like something you would have with a group, unless you are long term high, uh, you know, unless you smoke a lot, then you build a resistance, you know, you could like, uh, I can't imagine smoking a whole joint by yourself. So don't do something like that. That reminds me of my, my brother. He was having a lot of anxiety. And he's a fireman. And so um, he had a fireman, another fireman give him some I think it was like a little bud or something and said, okay, here, this is what my wife uses for her anxiety. You know, smoke this. Here's a little pipe, smoke this and, you know, just take like a hit or something and you'll feel a lot better. So he did and he felt a lot better. And then somebody else gave him some, and I don't remember, it was something different with how it was measured or something. And he smoked like five hits or something and he didn't know that he was only supposed to smoke one <laughs> and he thought he was dying oh it was a big drama it's so funny um but but so yeah you don't want to be like oh i'm gonna go smoke a joint and see how i'm feeling no you probably your 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 brain will be so overly stimulated you will feel like oh my god <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna fucking die here so yeah you just want to smoke like one little tiny bit and, um, and then, you know, you got to relax, you got to tune in still, um, you know, you just relax, your brain just relaxes. It's like, it shuts off so much of the noise that's out there. But, um, let's see those two things that was, there was something else I was talking about with, the um, 
Yeah, well, anyways, if you really uh, get into your mind that this is a, a movie, this isn't like really happening, you really are uh, an eternal being, that nothing can hurt you, nothing, nothing is more powerful than you, you know, because you are a part of a whole system. And there isn't a part that isn't supposed to be there. Well, like this is, you know, kind of a sickness of where we are, you know, like a disease because it's so toxic. But in this shift, you know, oh, that's what I think I was going to say was, you know, as the whole system is moving, it's moving all of us. Like we are moving too. like you have to be raising your vibration. You have to be working on yourself in order to be staying in, in sync with the planet, with the system. Otherwise, you know, you're going to, as things are being exposed, you will fall to another reality or something. I had heard somebody else talking about that yesterday, and I've heard it so many times where this, you know, we're going to divide. And um, that's part of in the Bible and stuff with this um, rapture. I think they call it is, um, you know, this divide between the two groups. And it, I, I mean, I still have most of my family is in the <laughs> separate group for me. So, you know, I don't really like to give that too much energy, but you know, it's out of my control. However, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So I don't want to sit and stress about it and worry about it. But, um, this whole thing about the water thing and, um, you know, when I got this place, I am, um, like 30 miles back from the ocean, like I said before, and I don't even know, like, because when you go on roads, you know, you're turning like, the other day I left. Okay. And their little artificial sun was out and it was over here on this part. And then I'm driving and all of a sudden it's over here and then I'm driving and all of a sudden it's here. So, um, <clears throat> The way that the roads twist around, it's not a straight shot. So I don't know when the water's coming, it's not going to follow a roadway. It's just going to go straight shot, you know. <laughs> it's not going to go, which way do I go? It's just going to go. And so um, the I, I don't really know how far it would have to travel to get to me. It might even be 20 miles. Um, but in that water thing, it said that the water was going to come up 300 miles. So see, my place would be underwater. So I'm sitting here getting it all ready to <clears throat> rent out for a vacation place and it could be underwater and, you know, I mean, who knows? It could be underwater by summer. I mean, we don't know, it, 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 even if they are messing with the timelines and stuff, there's no way to know when some of this stuff is going to occur. Is it going to occur because we are going to, as we wake up, we're going to make it happen? Like, I don't know, but I went to look at the map this morning to see like, well, okay, Canada is going to come down and like a mountain range is going to be up. And then it's going to cut across like California, Nevada, and Utah will be gone. Louisiana will be gone. The Mississippi is supposed to become way wider. The whole eastern coastline is going to change. A lot of Florida is going to be gone. Um, California is going to have a couple of little islands. Um, but, you know, who knows how big they'll be. Um, and then a lot of states just change the shape. Like certain parts of the state are gone. Even Colorado. There's not a lot of Colorado left. So it has something also to do with <clears throat> the elevation. And that's why a lot of these billionaires are buying. <clears throat> God, I can't quit stop growing. <clears throat> and this is another thing too. Like today's another one where they do the rain. So if you think about how they bring their chemicals in, like the planes go, well, here we have the planes going with the fucking time. But, you know, they bring in the chemicals, they drop the chemicals, they make the rain. So the rain puts it on everything. Then they make a nice day. So we go outside and we breathe in all of these wonderful chemicals that they've shared with us. And then they, you know, do some sort of probably like a haze over us. And then you get these horrible allergies and stuff like that where, you know, you're full of snot. You're like, you're full of stuff. Um, 
but they have a way that they do it. And I, yesterday, when because I did go out and raked and did stuff because Stella likes to be outside so much. And um, before I went out, I was like, oh, it's a pretty day. And every time I'd open the door to let her, I was like, oh, it feels so good. I want to go outside. And then I, all of a sudden I was like, oh, they do this to draw us outside. They make a nice day to get us to go out because they want us to fill ourselves up with these chemicals. So they are so nefarious. There's such a process to their fucking nonsense. But um, uh, Dolores Cannon had talked about, because she lived up in the high hills in um, the Appalachian, I think she lived in Arkansas. And she said, it's really weird because all of a sudden we have all of these like generals and stuff buying big pieces of property and homes and stuff up here high in the hills like why and why would there be so many buying in these certain places like I mean they there's no telling it, it wouldn't surprise me if they would go into some of these rural communities just fucking poison them all blast them all kill them how would we ever know it's not like the news is going to tell us anything there that's just a program that's just a distraction tool so you know, they go in and wipe out a whole community, uh, especially, you know, the hillbillies. That's what they give labels and they give you the background so that you don't really care. Oh, who cares about them? Who cares about the homeless? Who cares about the hillbillies? Who cares about the black people? Who cares about the Indians? Like they do this stuff to, you know, they give you a backstory and it's like the same thing they do with their uh, corporate espionage how they use these soldiers where they got soldiers fighting each other <laughs> it's like, because they're they give everybody backstories they create the they create the movie scene that you're playing and you know and when you talk about if you know is there a real truth well the real truth is they need to fess up that they're lying to us about everything that's the real truth that needs to come out that they're fucking lying and manipulating everybody but, um, you know, when she was talking about all these people buying, and then I'm positive it was around, she was the one who said something about the water and the map changing. And I don't know if it was when she was talking to other beings. I'm not really sure. Because she would talk to them when um, she would take people into their other, um, their past lives. And there would be, I remember one specifically, she's got like, I don't know, 10 or 12 books. She has a lot of books and her books are interesting. If you're into like, you know, para normal kind of, uh, the supernatural, the world that they tell you doesn't exist. Um, if you are into it, she has a lot of books, but this one, she had somebody under and they, uh, you know, so she's talking to the person they're hypnotized and she's talking to them and asking them where they are and stuff. And they're on a ship, a spaceship. And they, she starts explaining who's on the ship with her. Then one of the aliens, uh, Tall Gray, starts communicating, starts saying that they want to talk and starts telling her stuff. So she's had a lot of really crazy stuff. Even that's where she was talking about there is no time. Like time is happening all at once. It isn't like, you know, that happened before and it led to this. Like there's a there's some kind of a circle, some kind of a ride where the generations make a difference. But we don't. But things are happening at the same time. And so she was talking to or she was talking to a girl and this girl was going and she was um, wanting to do a class. And so she was talking about that she had to pretend to be a man because women weren't allowed to be educated. So she was going through this whole life and she's explaining it and she goes into the class. And so she's talking, you know, the Dolores is asking her questions and she's talking and um, the teacher starts saying, who are you talking to? To the girl. And she said, she told him, and it was Nostradamus who was doing this class. So he starts talking to Dolores, and then he, this was got so trippy, because he starts talking to her, and 
giving her information and explaining how he talked in his things. Like, you know, it's always in like metaphors and analogies and these different ways that they communicated before. And so he had a certain thing that he used to talk. And I can't remember what, what he, how he did it. But so she starts talking to him. And every time this girl would come, they started having this girl come all the time so that she could go under so Dolores could talk to him. And she started um, writing a book about it. And so she would go in and talk to him. And then he, um, the girl was like, okay, well, I've had enough. I'm going to move. I'm not going to be here anymore. So, so the Nostradamus told Dolores, okay, I'm going to come and see you still. Um, but I'm going to use a keyword so you know it's me. And so she would be doing somebody else's, um, you know, somebody else's hypnosis and all of a sudden they'd start saying the key word and start talking to her. So she's got books out about that. And, um, that's why I said, you know, she was communicating with the other side through people by putting them into a deep hypnosis. And I was around then that I heard about the, um, the changing of our, our map and the water and the water rising and stuff. And that's why I've paid attention. But you know, as it is, I'm in the, <laughs> if it's going 300 miles inland in, over here on the West Coast, I mean, that's halfway across the state. No, that is almost to Spokane because it's like 300 miles, 370 miles or something to Spokane. So Spokane, the whole other side of the state would actually be on the water, like that is so great. Let me let her out. She's having a fit. Hold on. <clears throat> Why is she so dramatic? So, anyways, um, now it is like, okay, so if the water, I mean, I'm not going to be in fear of it. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like scared, but. If you um, think about like, oh, well, if this is what's going to happen to be the awakening, like something's going to happen and the water starts rising, then, you know, we all have to evacuate. Like what a dramatic, especially if we have to go 300 miles and if it were to come in like a tsunami and be fast, like the people that were having all of those dreams, those um, prolific dreams, there was a whole bunch of people there for a while who was having these prolific dreams in New York and they were posting about it because they were really terrified. And I think there's a lot of people who watched the volcano over there because they kept talking so much about what it was going to do. It was going to take out all of New York. And, um, but in the dreams, it happened really fast and there's just mass amount of people that died. And, you know, I mean, if they do something like that, like we see, you know, they're waving their dick with their weather machines. So, you know, if, if they do do something with a mass flood, I mean, it would be total chaos and there would be tons of people who would be killed. And the map is, I mean, they're telling us themselves, the map is going to change. And it's weird too, is you know, that they're not telling people, like they're letting people continue to build like these giant, especially over here in, um, you know, Microsoft world, they're letting these people build these giant freaking mansions. And, um, you know, I mean, it's a waste of money if it, the world's about to be flooded. Why wouldn't they be telling us, hey, we believe there's going to be an event that is going to wipe all of you out. You need to move inland. You know, we've got all of this flyover states. <clears throat> Those are going to be like, there's going to be, if you look at the map, you see a lot of mountains because the mountains would be above the water. But a lot of the country is going to be what people thought of as the flyover states. So, um, and you know, these billionaires are buying up all of this property. I think it was um, Bezos, I think buying a bunch in, <clears throat> there's a couple that bought a bunch in Montana. <clears throat> so Montana, and that's pretty far inland, um, in North Dakota, Wyoming, 
<clears throat> all those places are supposed to still be there. So in, in that map. So if they're paying attention to this map where they're buying, why in the world aren't they telling us like you need to be, you know, we all need to be moving inland. We need to start this evacuation now. We need to start moving here. It just shows over and over and over and over and over again. They don't give a fuck about us. They they want us to be dead. But, you know, they also know that it, there is no death. They're just marketing death to create fear so that you buy drugs and pay for medicine. And, you know, um, I mean, when you have everybody living really anxious and fearful then you have more control over them. I, I just thought The Village, that movie, showed that so well on, you know, how you control people with fear. And so, and, and, and that wasn't about them being on drugs and stuff. It was just about, you know, what they will do to protect themselves. And if they think somebody's there to protect them, you know, they'll do whatever they say. So... You know, that's the whole thing is we just have all of these mindless people who just do whatever they say. Because, um, I mean, <laughs> it's just so much ridiculousness with, you know, all of this stuff. And, oh, just just do this and you'll be fine. <laughs> and people are just believe it. And then, you know, well, you better do your part the bullying that goes on and stuff and you know the just the mindless do whatever they say when <clears throat> they're showing the whole time that they're holding um you know a gun up to every, it's like they're holding a gun up to your cousin's head telling you you better do something and you're like okay yeah I'll do it you should have done it too <laughs> you know it's just the whole thing is just um I, I just don't I don't see how the people don't see that they have got a gun held to them. They, they they don't see they're being escorted off a cliff. It's like, you know, no little spidey sense coming on. Nothing arousing their level of suspicion. I mean, where's their intuition? That's the thing that blows my mind. It's like, but I look at it as like somehow they've systematically just shut that down in people. And by using science and, you know, God's the bad guy, you know, you want to, you want to really turn your life over to God, you know, he, he'll send you to hell if you don't do it right. Just the whole thing like that never made sense to me. I was like that, how in the world do you worship somebody that that's the, they've got rules like that. Is that the kind of rules you'd, you'd make on people you loved? Like that doesn't make sense. But, you know, so many people just don't question things. They just um, do or do whatever they think is going to get them the best outcome. You know, when I just I turned on some movie this morning, I was looking for something to watch. You know, some romantic comedy or something called Coffee Shop, I think. And I only had seen a few minutes, but the this girl goes on. I guess she's talking about her dating life. And she goes on this date with this guy. And she's super, super pretty. He wasn't, yeah. I was like, he's he would not be somebody I would think she would even go out with. But, you know, that right there shows she's kind of desperate. You know, she'll just go out with whoever. And then she's sitting at the table. And the whole date, he's on his phone watching a game. I was like, dude. She came out to get to know you, not watch you watch TV. Don't make a date when you have a fucking game you want to watch. Like, but right there it shows like the kind of shit we will put up with. Like, why in the hell is he making a date? Because this is real. Like, this stuff really happens. It's not just in a movie. And why the hell is he making a date when there's some game he wants to watch? And why the hell is she sitting there putting up with that and not getting up? I mean, she's probably sitting there thinking like, oh, I wonder, you know, what my name would look like with his, you know, because that is what people have gotten themselves in. Like, I'll accept any bullshit. Yeah, treat me like shit. It's okay. The government treats me, the whole world treats me like shit. You're just another, you know, what we have grown accustomed to putting up with. 
because, <laughs> you know, I mean, I probably would have sat there too thinking, oh, maybe I'm not interesting enough. Maybe I should think of something else to talk about. Maybe it's, you know, whatever. Take it all on as your own problem when it's a fucking red flag. Like, why the hell would I want to be with somebody this fucking rude that has no interest in me as a person? And why would I try and make a relationship with this person? Why would I try and take it any further? I mean, uh, why can't I see right now? Hey, that's just stopped. <laughs> You're not coming in my orbit. So, you know, but that is part of our awakening, you know, awakening to what is okay. What's okay? How can you treat me? And raising the bar of how you treat others. So what you accept and what you put out, you know, and when you find yourself becoming in balance, you know, that you are not going to put out bullshit, but you're also not going to accept bullshit. So, yeah, <laughs> somebody I go out to a dinner on a date like that and some guy pulls out his phone and sitting there watching the game, not talking to me. I just got up and walked out. There's no fucking way at this point in my life. No, I don't have time for selfish kind of bullshit, stuff like that. And so, anyways, that's as far as I had seen in the movie so far, but I just thought that really stood out. Another thing, too, is the commercial that came on was, um, <laughs> this is part of their programming, uh, work, work smarter, not harder. And the visuals is like a guy is having his a vacuum cleaner, you know, like I've got my little monster. You just push it and then it goes and starts just cleaning. It's the cutest little thing. But so he's using, cause you have a remote, you can program like if you're, so you're going to sit there and figure out how to program something to bring it to you rather than get up off your ass and go get your damn beer yourself. That's, that's working smarter. Like see how they put the programming in there. So then, um, you know, your lazy ass can't even do like five steps to the fridge. <laughs> Work smarter, be smarter than that. Don't, don't move. Just sit there like a freaking blob. So everything on the commercial was showing those kinds of things. Of, you know, being smarter, don't work harder. Work smarter. Just sit your lazy ass down and look for something that can bring stuff to you. And make sure you got your remote because you don't want to miss the next program. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> this stuff is just so obvious and so ridiculous and you know, every five minutes, there's these commercials. What was it? Somebody just said to me um, the other day, have you noticed there's no commercials about blah, blah, blah anymore when we were being inundated before uh, with these other commercials? And, you know, it was just nonstop. But then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, we got that in their heads. Now we got to do this. We got to push this. And it, how much it has to do with whatever drug they're pushing. You know, I mean, so much stuff about depression, depression, depression. We're going to take away the sun. We're going to keep you locked in your homes. And But look at, watch TV because we've got a lot of drugs that can help you out of this depression that we've created for you. So, um, you know, all on fear and uh, there's just there's just so much of it. And you just have to just pay attention. Just like I said, you know, when they all of a sudden start pushing suicide in movies. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's a huge increase in suicide in the world. You know, it's like right now there's a huge increase in depression and anxiety and neurodivergent, all this stuff. Like the more people let go of the labels and move out of that, you know, that is such a, a movement towards freedom is to just quit letting labels define you, you know, and really start understanding you're a unique individual who's here to be yourself, who's here to understand yourself. So you don't want the limitations of these labels. And it's a lot to break free from. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things where you just got to start catching yourself, like how we generalize and how we use labels is it's part of our understanding, it's part of the development of consciousness. It's been a part of how we have become to understand ourselves, but now it's time to release these things. It's like, you know, you're in first grade, second grade, you know, you go through elementary school, so then you're gonna move into middle school, so you're ascending, you're moving up, you're going to a higher, 
higher um, vibration, a higher minded thinking, right? So are you going to, you know, keep holding on to first grade, second grade? Or are you going to focus on sixth grade, seventh grade? So that's why there's so much of this stuff we have to release. We've learned it. We understand it. So now we've got to put it into action into our lives. We have to realize like, no, I'm not going to label other people. I'm not going to label myself. I'm going to remove those kind of concepts from my own language and begin to look at people as individuals, not generalized stereotyping and, um, you know, just really in the connection with other people. And I think for some of us who are older, you know, this is something we're more accustomed to. It's something they took away that we all started noticing, like, you know, you don't go out to dinner and sit at a group of people and all sit on your phone. Like, what is happening to you people? <laughs> like, when that stuff started being, you know, because we all came from places that you know, socially interacted. We didn't have a phone in our pocket. You know, you didn't have to talk to somebody because they wanted to talk to you right then. And there certainly wasn't text and all this stimulation all the time. I mean, we were actually out riding our bikes and doing adventures and having fun and, you know, creating and building. And um, so we all know how to sit and communicate. And, uh, but, you know, like, like I said before, I know I told this story before of um, the whole thing was like a weird situation. Anyways, I was out with somebody and then um, we were at this bar and in Spokane, it's a college town. So the bars at night down in that area will be, you know, like a lot of action. A lot of people walking around and all these bars in one place. So everybody's out there walking around. So when you go down, like if you want to go dancing or something, there's a lot of people down there. And um, so this um, person who had actually molested me before, like it was a whole thing. The whole creepy ass thing that happened at this, uh, I probably told the story before, but it doesn't really matter. But anyways, so when I saw this person out, it kind of freaked me out and he started following me around, wanting to talk to me and I was trying to keep away from him. And the person I was with was so enthralled in their conversation was, I don't know, the guys hitting on him that, um, you know, they're like, oh no way. And I'm like, I want to go. I got to get the fuck out of here you know, uh, so-and-so's here and I don't want to be around them. And, um, so I'm sitting there and there's this girl sitting there too. And we're both like kind of sitting in this kind of same area. And it seemed like she was waiting for someone too. So I start like chatting like a normal person and she couldn't fucking do it. And she just starts texting and I would say something else and she would just start texting. And, you know, this, this like maybe one word answer or something, where you could be, I could totally tell, like, what the hell? Like, this is so weird. Like, this, does she not know how to communicate? Like, when I was younger, if somebody would have sat down, especially an older person would have sat down next to me, I would have been like, you know, ah, oh, what do you know? Give me the wisdom of the, the older people. Like, what have you seen? You know, I, that's how I was. And, and I just, I kept getting the vision, um, that she's sitting there texting somebody, this weird woman keeps trying to talk to me. And I was like, how weird. So you're so caught up in the conversation with your friend that you talk to all the time to talk bad about people, but you can't even remove yourself from that reality and actually interact with somebody and have a real conversation of connection. And uh, I just is weird, but that is a part of what uh, some of these people have to learn to get over that most of us, well, most of us that are older at a certain age, you know, before they really shove the technology, because really when you think about like the metaverse, the metaverse is just another step beyond your phone. I mean, they've already got people consciousness so in, entwined with their phone that they can't even barely speak to normal people or have conversations or anything. So, um, anyways, it's just something to think about. Um, you know, all of that stuff is just something to think about, but I think it is something to think about. Like, you know, is it going to be the water is going to rise and then that is going to be 
what draw part of the awakening or is it going to be that the water rises after this big shift occurs i i mean i think that they i i swear i think their map thing was um 2024 but it could be 2027 but i think that guy on tiktok his video was something about 2030 but no matter what 2030 is even close like 2024 is really close and 2027 is close like all of this time is very close you know like how much how much do i really want to put into this house if it's going to be underwater here in a couple of years like you know is it time to cut my losses and go buy a uh, i i used to want to go and buy a, a houseboat so bad i wanted to get a houseboat and i wanted to go down south and live on a houseboat and um you know, and then my kids were like, no, God, you can't move that far. So I move over here. But now it's like, I don't know, is this really the smartest place to go? And I still feel like, well, we should probably all have a boat. <laughs> like, I think we all need boats. Uh, because, yeah, just go check out that map. And, man, check it out where you live. And, and they don't give a shit. They're not going to warn us. They're not going to tell us. They want to make sure that they're getting all the property. So then they can sell it back to us at a way, way higher price because there will be less resources, less um, less um, property for sale and stuff. That's why they have a whole push. Oh, you don't want to own anything. No, you don't want to own anything. Look at all of the properties if they do that. Look how many homes are owned on the coast. I mean, it has been such a thing for so long that people have gone up if you look at all of the different countries that have water, you will see a general, the population, the mass majority moves towards the water. Even if it's lakes around, you see a condensed uh, population around waterways. I think it's in our blood. It's in us to want to do that. Um, but, you know, I mean, when they change it, if they were to have control like they want, it would be to, you know, we wouldn't have anything. We would just be, you know, the poor people who are struggling on the street. Well, all, we'd all be homeless. All the people who would lose their homes as the waterway comes in, you know, and then they would make properties be so expensive. And, uh, oh, and then plus, I don't know if um, I also heard that um, Russia, Brazil, uh, like seven other countries or something. It was a bunch of countries in a list that, and the weird thing was, is that China was included, but they said they're on the gold standard now and they're no longer there's something with our money because our money has paper. It's fucking monopoly money. It's not real. There's nothing to back it up. So that's why I'm like, how do they keep this going? If we were writing hot checks, we'd go to jail. But there's certain countries now that are telling us they're not going to, have financial um things with us i mean uh like we can't buy stuff from china if we're using monopoly money right they're gonna be like hell no we're not selling it to you we don't need a bunch of paper so we'll see the effects of that you know that's going to be a part of the awakening because it is like america is like the last frontier it's the last big takeover canada too but trudeau i mean that fucking commie motherfucker he's had that place you know he's been wrangling in that place for a while here it's kind of worked against them um, because of our election process how we have to you know every few years but you see like obama just going right back in there like hey i'm back guys <laughs> so they have their group you know uh, hillary all of them are, uh, they've got their group that is trying to take us down <laughs> what about this judge <laughs> I don't believe in human rights at all. <laughs> like, oh, really? You don't believe in human rights at all? Well, this is going to be fun to watch you be exposed because, um, yeah, it's going to be human rights. Uh, right now, they are trying to tell us that their laws are what we have to follow. Well, your laws don't then go against my human rights. You can't, you don't have control over my human rights, but people have to recognize, you know, I have human rights, I have God given rights. They don't get to set the new rule. They don't get to tell us what my rights are. No, they can fuck off. So that is part of this, you know, freedom movement is to realize like your God-given rights, not 
what they allow you to do and don't allow you to do. You know, you, you can go over here, but you can't go over there. You can go there, but you can't go here. And you better wear this or you better get this. It's like, fuck off with this shit. I'll sit here and wait until you guys, I'm not going to go out and play their games with them. And especially, you know, just going outside. Like they're freaking spraying us all the time, keeping us sicker and sicker and sicker. So anyways, just stuff to think about. I'm going to go towards town today and pick up my groceries. It was um, payday, <laughs> payday of the fake money day. So um, I'm going to go pick up some groceries and, um, you know, and then just come back in and buckle back down. And I think today's the eighth. So in the one, Joni, who was did her astrology thing, see, everything was supposed to Everybody, all everybody was supposed to be awakened, and this was going to be like a big thing. Um, she even did another thing today about it. I think I saw another one pop up, and she may have made it yesterday or whatever. But it's about the eighth, so I didn't go in and watch it. Um, you know, I don't know. I know stuff is going on, but I know something really big has to happen to wake up the other people. But, you know, who knows? Maybe these other people are right. Maybe they've got their shot. <laughs> it's done. And now we're going to split apart. Like, I don't know. Everything's on the table. We just have to keep waiting and watching to see what's going to happen in this movie. <laughs> like, And when they keep changing the freaking, um, they keep changing the script. They keep changing it every, I swear to God, I think they change it every week. That's how they just drag this out and drag this out because uh, it's it's mental how they've kept this going. <laughs> I mean, how somebody puts themselves in and then puts a judge in that a judge that doesn't believe in human rights like they go oh my what the fuck oh my god this is mental. So, anyways, just stuff to think about. I'll talk to you later. Bye.